in the book of Psalm, chapter number 23, and beginning in verse number 1. Psalm chapter 23, and beginning in verse number 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so that's reading uh, Psalm chapter 23 and verses 1 through 6, and, and maybe last Sunday or Sunday before last, I don't remember which, I, I, I quoted a portion of this passage in, uh, in the message that I preached then. And this passage has stuck with me since then and come to my mind as I was mowing or doing uh, different things around the house, working around the house, and, or uh, uh, driving down the road, going to the different doctor's offices that we've had to go to of late. And uh, this passage, kept, this 23rd Psalm, kept coming back to my mind. And, and, and of course, it's a favorite of many people. And, and, and as I said the last time that, that uh, I quoted it, that, or part of it, that, uh, you know, this is one of the favorites that people use at the time of loss of a loved one and funerals and things of that nature. A lot of times you'll see uh, 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 this 23rd Psalm put on a bouquet or something like that at a funeral. But I'm so glad, amen, that the, that the Lord, that this passage uh, means more than just when we come down to the end of the road or when we lose a loved one, beloved. But we notice here in, in, in Psalm uh, chapter 23 and beginning in verse number 1, he said, I, I want you to notice there, first of all, the first three words that he says in, in, in verse number one, the Lord is. Thank God I'm glad that there is a God. I'm glad. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my Lord. Thank God. And I, I'm so thankful that, that there's a God. He's real. Thank God. And I know that he's real because he lives down on the inside Thank God he lives in me. But he uh, tells us in, in Psalm 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. There is a God this morning, my beloved friend. I realize and know that in this uh, modern age that we're living in, that there are many and, and uh, the so-called, uh, the vast majority, the so-called educated people of our day and uh, the scientists of our day and all like that, that they don't believe that there is a God. But I'm here to tell you this morning, beloved friend, there is a God. Thank God. And, and he tells us in Deuteronomy 32 and 39, and we quote it so many times, uh, he said, See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make a lion. I wound and I heal, uh, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. The reason that I'm here this morning in, in, at Lewis Lane Central Baptist Church and the reason that you're here this morning at Lewis Lane Central Baptist Church, the reason that you're able this morning to take part in and, and enjoy this good service of the Lord and these blessings from the Lord is because there's a God. There's a God that willed it so. Thank God. And, Beloved friend, I, I, I thank the Lord that I am not some kind of a cosmic accident that just happened to be brought uh, along uh, by some natural processes. I am not, uh, beloved, this morning descended uh, uh, from some uh, bacteria or amoeba-like creature uh, uh, that uh, 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 somehow or another came alive uh, in uh, some uh, 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 prehistoric soup or something like that of uh, my beloved friend and, and uh, uh, come along and, 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 and eventually my beloved evolved and all like that uh, and eventually came down to an ape and then uh, 
my beloved friend, a human being. But thank God I'm glad of this morning that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. I'm glad that God, my beloved friend, I thank God for man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils of the breath of life and man became a living soul. He planted a garden eastward in Eden and he put the man in that garden and he caused different animals to come out of the ground. And beloved friend, the the ones that he mentions in, in Genesis chapter 2, by the way, are just the ones that he made in the garden. That's separate from what he's talking about in Genesis chapter 1. But beloved friend, he, he calls these animals to come. Amen. That formed them from the ground and brought them to Adam and, and whatever Adam called them, that was their name. But he said there was no help need, my beloved friend, for Adam. And the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone and the Bible said that he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he took out a rib and closed up the flesh instead thereof and of that rib made a woman and brought her unto the man and presented him her unto him my beloved friend and performed the first wedding ceremony that was ever performed thank God I'm glad that there is a God, my beloved friend, and I'm dependent on him, and you're dependent on him this morning, amen, for everything. The Bible said that it's in him how we live, move, and have our being, my beloved friend. Everything that we are, and everything that we have, and everything that we possess is because of him, and his darling baby boy, Jesus Christ, my beloved friend, amen, his only begotten son, how that he said, into this world uh, to bleed and die on the cross of Calvary that we could be saved this morning. I'm glad uh, that there is a God uh, and he's my God this morning. I uh, uh, thank God I am his uh, and he is mine. What a blessing that is. Uh, you notice here what he said. Uh, he said the Lord is uh, uh, my shepherd. Thank God I'm glad. Uh, amen. He's my shepherd this morning. I uh, uh, thank God what a blessing that is. Uh, and the Bible tells us that Jesus said uh, in John 10 and verse number 11 he said I am the good shepherd uh, the good shepherd giveth uh, his life for the sheep I uh, uh, thank God I'm glad that he came into this world uh, and he took upon himself that body of flesh uh, and he made his way up Golgotha's rugged brow uh, and there hung between the heavens and the earth thank God uh, and paid my sin debt uh, and your sin debt on the cross of Calvary and because of what he did for me uh, and because because of what he did for you. Uh, uh, we don't have to go to that awful place of torment. Uh, uh, but one day after a while. Uh, I thank God we're going to get to be with him in glory. Uh, amen. What a blessing that is. Uh, I'm glad the Lord uh, is my shepherd. Uh, and Jesus said again. Uh, in John 10 and 14. He said I am the good shepherd. Uh, and know my sheep. Uh, and I'm known of mine. Thank God aren't you glad this morning. Uh, amen. That he knows you. Uh, and and you know him. And the Bible said, amen, that he calleth his own sheep by name, and he goeth before them. What a blessing that is. I'm glad, amen, that he knows me by name. I'm glad this morning, my beloved friend, amen, that I have a personal relationship with him. I know him, my beloved friend. He's my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God, and I love him this morning. Amen, I love of him because uh, he first loved me. Uh, a greater love hath no man than this uh, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh, hey man, Jesus loved you and I so much uh, that he was willing to come uh, and bleed and die for us uh, on the cross of Calvary that we might be saved. What a blessing that is. Uh, I'm glad the Lord is uh, my shepherd, thank God. He's my shepherd this morning. Amen. Thank God. He's the one that leads me. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one that takes care of me this morning. He's the one that I'm dependent on this morning, my beloved friend, to supply all our needs. And the Bible said that he's able, amen, to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. What a blessing that is. I'm glad. Amen. He don't necessarily give me all my wants. 
on. So, but I want to tell you this morning, thank God he takes care of me. Amen. He gives me what I need. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Thank God what a blessing that is. I'm glad that the Lord is my shepherd. Thank God. I want you to notice here what he said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank God that means, uh, hey man, I shall not lack this morning. That's what that word want means there uh, in the way that it's used. Thank God I'm glad. Uh, hey man, we don't uh, suffer any lack this morning. Uh, hey man, uh, listen, two different times in the word of God, uh, uh, the Bible declared, I have been uh, young uh, and now I am old. Uh, and he said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken uh, nor his seat begging for bread. Uh, I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, Hey man, our good shepherd takes care of us and he gives us what we need this morning. What a blessing that is. I'm so thankful for that and everything that we have and everything that we possess, it comes from him, amen. And I've heard people say, preacher, I've worked for my money and Everything that I got, I got by my own hand. I worked hard for it. That may be so, my beloved friend. Hey Amen. But who was it gave you the job that you had? Hey Amen. Uh, that may be so. Hey Amen. But who was it that gave you the health and the strength? Hey Amen. To be able to work, my beloved friend. Hey Amen. It come from God. Every good and every perfect gift come down from above. From the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, thank God, above his friend, it all comes from him. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank God, oh, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, amen, First Peter 2 and 25 said, for you were a sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. I want to tell you, I thank God for my home that I have up there on Timber Tree Branch that he's blessed me with. Amen. I thank God for the two automobiles that God, amen, has blessed me with. I thank the Lord this morning, my beloved friend, amen, for the clothes that I wear on my back, amen, that the Lord has blessed me with. I thank God this morning, my beloved friend, for the food that I enjoy too much as you can see. Hey man, I thank God for the food that I eat. I want to tell you this morning more than anything else, I thank him that he saved my unworthy soul. I can stand before you this morning and I can declare without a shadow of a doubt that I know, that I know, that I know that I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm going to heaven, thank God. After a while, what a blessing that is. I know that I belong to him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I want you to notice that. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Verse number two. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What a blessing that is. I want to tell you this morning, he's our spiritual food and he's our spiritual drink. What a blessing that is. Listen, Jesus said in John 6 and 35, and he said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. What a blessing that is. I'm glad that he is that bread of life. Thank God. He is my spiritual food and he is my spiritual drink this morning. Thank God. John 6 and 50, he told them, said, This is the, that bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Thank God. I'm glad this morning, my beloved friend, that I partook of, of that heavenly bread. And I remember as Jesus was there, my beloved friend in the upper room, as he took part in that last Passover, that he was to take part upon this earth. And then he instituted the Lord's Supper. And he took bread after how that supper had ended. And he broke it and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. And then likewise also, amen, he took the cup. And after that he 
had blessed it. He gave unto them and said, Drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for many. Thank God I'm glad this morning, thank God, October 23rd, 1976, that I took part in that broken body and that shed blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and was saved by the grace of God. What a blessing that is. He's our spiritual food. And he's our spiritual drink this morning. Thank God. Jesus told uh, the woman at the well. Amen. She came down. Jesus being wearied of John chapter 14, Jesus being weary with his journey. And, amen. He, the Bible said that he must needs go uh, through Samaria. And Jesus being we weary with his journey. Uh, amen. Sat down on, on Jacob's well. Uh, and that woman of Samaria came down, uh, uh, my beloved, uh, to draw water. And Jesus asked her, uh, uh, said, uh, give me drink. Uh, and she was astonished uh, because the Jews had no dealings uh, with the Samaritans. Uh, and, he, and, and she said, why uh, does thou, a Jew, uh, ask a drink of me, uh, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings uh, with the Samaritans. Uh, and Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knew us the gift of God and who it was that asked of thee give me drink he said he would have given thee a drink of living water amen springing up into everlasting life I thank God what a blessing that is amen and, 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 and a beloved friend amen as she, as I said that was John 14 it's John chapter 4 but Jesus said of that water he said whosoever drinketh of this water of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Thank God I'm glad. Amen. That Jesus Christ is my spiritual drink. He's my spiritual bread and he's my spiritual drink. And I thank the Lord this morning that I had a drink of that living water. Thank God I'm glad this morning that I have everlasting life. What a blessing that is. And Jesus said I, in John chapter 10 said I give unto them speaking of his sheep he said I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand my father which giveth them me is greater than all and no man shall be able to pluck them out of my father's hand what a blessing that is I'm glad he's my spiritual food and he's my spiritual drink. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, amen, it's not a burden for me this morning to come down to the house of the Lord. Seems like so many today, and the vast majority of people that profess to be Christians today, they never darken the house of the Lord. Some that do, my beloved friend, they do go to church, but maybe it's just one time a month. And some of them once every three months or every six months. And some maybe once or twice a year, and that's all that they go. But I want to tell you, beloved friend, it's not a burden for me, amen, to come down to the house of the Lord. I want that spiritual food that God has for me down at the house of God. I want to come down, amen, I want to obey Him, and I want to worship Him in spirit spirit and in truth this morning Jesus said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth I want to tell you this morning I love the good spiritual food amen this uh, I mean Sunday school this morning is a blessing to me Amen. To hear the word of God taught and to hear the word of God preached and to hear the goodness of God testified about, my beloved friend. Amen. It's a blessing to me and it feeds my soul this morning. Amen. Thank God to hear the good songs of Zion. And Amen. As, as was sung this morning, my beloved friend, songs of, of praise to the Lord, to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's food to me, thank God. And it satisfies my soul. I want to tell you this morning, beloved friend, he's our spiritual food. And here's our spiritual drink. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I, listen, beloved friend, the Bible said, He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness 
shall be filled. If you want something from the Lord this morning, when you come down to the house of God, God will give you something. Somebody might say, preacher, I was there, and I just couldn't feel a thing. Maybe, maybe we ought to check up, my beloved. Hey, man, maybe there's something wrong with us. And I've, I've had uh, uh, people, I've heard people say, when God had blessed me, uh, and when I had gotten a great blessing from the Lord, uh, I have heard people make the statement, I went down there to that church, and God wasn't within a thousand miles of that place. I want to tell you, they needed to, they needed to, to check up, amen. Oh, I want to tell you if, you, if you want something from the Lord, amen, thank God, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to get to it in great detail, but one of the things that he, that he tells us there in verse number five, he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, amen, if God will prepare us a table in the very presence of our enemies, how much more shall he not prepare us a table? Amen. Thank God in the house of God amongst our friends and our brothers and our sisters in Christ. I'm here to tell you, if we want something from the Lord, we can have it this morning. Thank God, what a blessing. And I am persuaded. And I've heard people make this statement, boy, if old so-and-so had been here, that message was right for him. Well, if he wasn't there, it wasn't for him. Hey, Amen. I, I am persuaded, my beloved friend, of, that in every message that we hear, of, that there is a part of that message somewhere, of, hey, amen, that God has for us. What a blessing that is. And I want to tell you, God's got something for us if we want it. Amen. I'm glad he's our spiritual food and he's our drink. Thank God. Then I want you to look. At verse number 3, he said, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thank God I'm glad he's my soul restorer this morning. He's our soul restorer. What a blessing that is. Psalms 116, or 116 in verse 8. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. But he said, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling. Thank God. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my deliverer this morning. Thank God. He's my soul. He restoreth my soul. What a blessing that is. And oh, listen, aren't you glad that every now and then and I know that there's going to come a time, my beloved friend, that's out there in the future, amen, when we go to be with Him, that's called the times of refreshing from the Lord. But aren't you glad as we walk along this Christian pathway, aren't you glad just every now and then God the Holy Ghost comes along and gives you a time of refreshing from the Lord? Thank God. Aren't He restoreth my soul. Thank God. I'm, I'm glad, my beloved friend. I'm glad. Thank God that we have the Lord. Thank God. And He's always near. And His ear is ever attentive to our cry. He said, Amen. His ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. Amen. His hand is not shortened that it cannot save this morning. Amen. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power of that worketh in us. What a blessing that is. Amen. He's my soul restorer this morning. In Psalms 40 and 2, David said he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going and put a new song in my mouth of even praise unto our God. I want to tell you, we need to praise him this morning. Thank God because he saved our unworthy soul. Amen. We need to praise him this morning because he supplies our every need. We need to praise him this morning because he's worthy of our praise. And, and all the things that we have and all the things that we enjoy and all the things that we possess, we should thank him for. But I want to tell you more than anything else, we need to thank and praise him 
because he so saved our soul from death and our feet from falling, thank God. We don't have to, if we're here and we're saved by the grace of God this morning, amen, if we are here and our sins are under the blood, if we are here and we've been born again, thank God, we don't have to go to that awful place that's called hell. But thank God we, uh, Jesus has promised us, amen, a home in glory one day after a while. What a blessing that is and how we need to praise Him this morning. Thank God. Amen. We need to lift up holy hands and praise Him. Amen. What a blessing that is. I'm glad. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Thank God. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2 at 8 and 9, he said, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God we're saved by the grace of God. Simply because we have received the free gift of God. We, have, we believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, Paul Amen. In 1 Corinthians 15 said, I delivered unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. He said, The word is nigh thee, and in thy heart, and in thy mouth. This is a word of faith which we preach, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. We were saved by grace. Amen. Through faith. Amen. Plus nothing and minus nothing. Simply by putting our faith and trust in the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work of the cross of Calvary. But I want to tell you, I want you to notice here what he said. He said, he leadeth, and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ephesians 2 and 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works of how that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I want to tell you this morning, I'm trying to live right, amen, to the best of my ability according to the dictates of, of God's holy word, not according to man's idea, not according to man's opinion, not according to papal bull, amen, not according to church declaration, but according to what thus, amen, saith the word of God. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not doing it to be saved or stay saved. I'm doing it this morning because I am saved by the grace of God. And I know I sin and come short of the glory of God. And I know I'm imperfect this morning. I mean, I'm not the best Christian that I ought to be. And I'm certainly not the best preacher and not the best pastor that I ought to be. There's many that's better than me this morning. But I want to tell you I'm His this morning. I belong to Him. Thank God. Amen. And folks will look down at their brothers and sisters and they'll be a judgmental of them. I'm not talking of, I, I'm not talking to my beloved friend about uh, 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 holding people, uh, holding uh, to Christian standards. That's not what I'm talking about. But folks will look at their brothers and their sisters uh, and see their faults this morning uh, and miss their own. Amen. Well, the scripture said, Who art thou? that judgest another man's servant. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. What a blessing that is. Amen. Thank God he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have been made new. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, I may not be the best that there is, but I'm here to tell you I'm not what I used to be. Jesus made a change in me. He made a difference in my heart and in my life and in my soul. And I am not the person that I used to be. 
And I don't believe, my beloved friend, that you can become acquainted with Jesus and never walk away the same this morning. You will never be the same if you ever really get to know Him. Thank God. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Excuse me, righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Verse number three. Amen. Verse number four, rather. Amen. Thank God. Verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's our comforter this morning. What a blessing that is. Amen. David said in Psalms 86 and 17, Thou, Lord, hast opened me and comforted me. Jesus told the disciples in the upper room in John 14 18, said, I will not leave you comfortless. But he said, I will come to you. Thank God, aren't you glad? He's our comforter this morning. Amen. Yes, what a blessing that is. He's our comforter. Jesus told the disciples, He said, I'm going to have to go away. John 14, 16, He said, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. The very millisecond that I was saved by the grace of God. Or you were saved by the grace of God. God the Holy Ghost moved into our heart. We didn't have to seek Him. You don't have to seek Him this morning. Amen. The Bible said without the Spirit of Christ or none of His, you can't be saved. Amen. Apart from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God. The very moment that you're saved by the grace of God, God the Holy Ghost, amen, comes in and takes up His abode with you. Thank God. And He will never leave you. But he will abide with you forever. God the Holy Ghost came into this world on the day of Pentecost and first indwelt believers. My beloved friend, he's been in the world for near 2,000 years. And when he leaves out of this world, amen, the work, the church is leaving with him. And he'll not leave before then. Thank God I'm glad that I've got that other comforter. I've got somebody that I can turn to. And I've said so many times that these people that don't know the Lord, I don't know how they make it. I don't know how they make it. Because I face things in my life and I know that you have just as well as me. Amen. We're no different. My beloved friend, we're all flesh. We're all humans. And we suffer alike, my beloved friend. But there's been times that I've been faced with things that I don't know what I'd have done had it not been for the Lord. Amen. Yesterday, I, and some of you that are on Facebook, you may have saw it. 101 p.m. yesterday, 29 years ago, 1980, or 39 years ago, rather, 1985. Amen. Andrew came into this world five weeks early. And he spent, I think, maybe about 11 days in infant ICU. I rode down on the elevator with the pediatrician that night. That, that, that time they wouldn't let you stay. They made me leave the hospital. And, I, and, and he, I stood in one corner of the elevator. And he stood in the other corner of that elevator. And he told me, he said, Mr. Christian, I believe in being honest with people. And he said, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, that boy laying in there, there's a 50% chance that he'll live. And there's a 50% chance that he'll die tonight. But he said, if he can make it till in the morning, he's got a good chance to survive. And I was just, I mean, I knew he was sick. And I, I, I knew, he, I mean, every time that he exhaled, his, he had no detergents in his lungs. And, and his heart and his lungs were not fully developed. And, and every time that he exhaled, his, his uh, uh, chest bone would hit his backbone. It would fully collapse. And I knew, he was, I knew he was sick. But I didn't realize it was that bad. And I don't even remember really driving home that night. And I don't remember rat raising my garage door. But I do remember when I got out of the car and I walked through into the house... And, at that time, mine and Karen's bedroom was in the basement. 
And I walked on through to the bedroom. And I fell on my face before God when I got to the foot of our bed. And I cried out to the Lord. And I said, oh God, if you'll only let him live, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I didn't really want to admit it to myself at that time, but that's when I surrendered. It still took a little bit longer. Rody, I mean, Andrew was almost a year old before I started preaching. Or, or just a little over a year old, rather. June the tw- I announced it in May, but I didn't actually start preaching until the 22nd of June. And I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, he, they told me, said he's not going to be... Uh, he's not going to be very tall. Said he probably won't be as tall as you. He'll be underdeveloped. And they told me, said he's probably going to have uh, learning problems. He's probably not going to develop fully mentally. And thank God, here just a little while back, amen, I've got to watch him graduate th- from three different colleges. Northeast, I got to wa- uh, uh, see him get his bachelor's degree. Amen. Berea College, I got to see him get his four-year degree in literature. And here just a few Saturdays ago, I got to go, amen, to North Carolina, to Carolina University, and see him graduate, amen, with a, with a master's degree in ministry this morning. Thank God. What a blessing. And he's as tall as I am, and that's good enough. Amen. He, he don't look it because he won't stand up straight. But he is when he stands up straight, and that's good enough. Amen. And he's smart. And now he's preaching the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, he's a great God. He is my shepherd this morning. Thank God, he's my comforter. What a blessing that he is. And then I want to look in verse number 6, and I'm getting ready to come to a close. And we see here, I'm going to have to skip verse number 4. Amen. Verse number 6, he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're going to dwell with him forever this morning. We're going to live with him forever. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 6, and 8, and and I can't ever remember to quote all of this, so I, 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 I typed it down so I could read it all to you. But three verses, Second Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Each and every one of us, we're all, the the majority of us, they some, amen, they some that are young in here, but the majority of us are getting on in years. Some of you are, are, are quite a bit older than me. And that day that we're all facing as, as natural things go is coming closer and closer to us and the day's going to come that we're going to have to lay down these earthly tabernacles. But according to this scripture, we can take comfort in the fact that we know, hey man, that we're going to go to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What a blessing that is. Not only that, but He's promised us in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. He said, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, and be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. In that last verse in that chapter, wherefore comfort ye one another with these words. Thank God one day after a while, I'm going to get a glorified body. Amen. Most of you didn't see it, but Brother Billy saw how I winced when I got off the seat this morning. And I'm sure many of you feel the same 
type of pain that I do. Amen. But thank God there's going to come a day when we're not going to feel that pain anymore. That arthritis is going to be gone. Amen. Uh, those weak hearts are going to be gone. Thank God. Uh, amen. That diabetes is going to be gone. Uh, amen. That cancer is going to be gone, my beloved friend. And we're going to have a glorified body made like unto His glorious body. What a blessing that is. We're going to get to live with Him forever. Amen. Before that takes place, I'm going to spend 1,000 glorious years with Him here on this earth. I believe that. I know a lot of folks don't. But that's all right. I do this morning. I know that we shall live and reign with Him upon the earth. What a blessing that is.